What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool entrance in Revit. It's like a reverse inverted gable roof and it's used for an entrance. I thought it's kind of cool, uh, looks quite amazing and I thought why not go over how to create something like this in Revit and what are some of the little tips and tricks along the way which you can use to create something like this. Uh, now before we get into that tutorial make sure to uh, subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week, I make multiple tutorials and then also make sure to like this video, it does help me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm, it helps promote the videos to other people that might want to see them. And finally, make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link just below the video. Uh, and there you can find uh, all of my courses. I have a beginner to intermediate level course uh, where I can take you from a complete novice to somebody who can finish projects completely on their own. And also I have many more advanced uh, courses where I go in depth and explain all of the complex Revit topics completely in depth, each setting, everything that you need to know. So if you're interested, make sure to check that out. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let's get started by going to models and then to new. And for the template file, I'm just going to choose my personal Balkan Architect uh, custom template, the metric version. And if you want to get access to uh, all of my templates, you can find those on my website. It's going to be the third link in the description. Anyways, let's just click yes or okay. And let's let Revit start right up. Okay, so for this demonstration, I'm just going to navigate here to the south elevation. And then here, as you can see, we have just a couple of levels. So I'm going to go to the level tool and add just a few more. So let's go to the pick lines. Let's say that we want the level height to be 3.6 meters. So let's just add a few more. Perfect. Let's go back into level one, uh, go to the wall tool, and then we can use the basic wall, go with the rectangle tool, and then just create a big old rectangle. Uh, select all of the walls and change the top, top constraint from unconnected to level 4, making it go all the way to the top. If I open up the 3D view here, as you can see, it goes up to the top. Anyways, once we have that created, now it's time to create our entrance. Now, for our entrance, for the opening, instead of selecting the wall and then editing the profile to create that opening. Instead of that, I'm going to go to component and use an in-place component, uh, an in-place void uh, in order to make that opening. Now, I'm going to explain why I use this approach uh, instead of maybe the more traditional just edit profile uh, approach uh, after I do that step. So let's go here to model in place. And then I'm just going to, oh, we can do this as a generic model, click OK, generic models, OK. We can go to the south elevation, for example, uh, go to set work plane, pick a plane, OK, let's pick this wall here. And then we can just go here to uh, void forms, void extrusion, there we go. Find kind of the center line, here we go, make one vertical center line. And then we can go, I don't know, something like two meters off to each side. I think that's more than enough. And then we can go up at a, let's go with a 40 degree angle. I like a 40 degree angle. It has like a nice aesthetic to it. And then we can just get rid of this. And finally, just use trim and extend to kind of fix this up. See how nice that 40 degree angle is. It's, I think it looks a little bit nicer than if it was at 45 or 30 or something like that. Anyways, I'm just going to use a simple line to close this off at the bottom, go to the 3D view, just to see what we have, hit finish. And here, make sure to extend it to the other face of the wall. So this is what that looks like. Now to make the opening, you just go here to cut geometry, select the wall, select the void, and you're done. Hit finish. And there we go. Okay, so now we have to add some walls on the inside. So for those walls, you want to go here to architecture, wall, let's go to level one. And here, just to make it easier, uh, go here and change the uh, core center line for the location line to the finish face exterior. And that's just going to make it a little bit easier to go like this. Let's go 1.5 meters towards the inside on both sides and then close it off. There we go, go to the 3D view. And this is what we have at the moment. Uh, now I'm just going to be explaining why I used that approach that I did with the 
uh, with making this opening as a uh, void in place uh, family instead of just selecting the wall and going to edit profile. So here for this wall, I'm just going to use that approach. So just go here to edit profile and let me do the same thing. So let's go. Let's go to the other elevation. So if this is south, this should be west elevation if my orientation is correct. And it is. Well, I'm quite happy with that. Anyways, let's just go up like this, two meters off to the side at a 40 degree angle. We can just mirror that using the pick access option. There we go. And then finally split element tool here and then trim and extend like so and like so. Okay, so now to explain why I did not use this approach. Well, uh, see what happens when I when now I go into level one and do this same thing on this side. So let us see. I'm just going to go here to the wall command. Again, location line is finish face exterior. Hit the space key to flip it. Go like that, like that, and close it off. Now let's see what happens. If I go to the 3D view, this now looks a little bit crooked. Now let's go to the west elevation. See, that doesn't look correct. If I were to go here to the indentation tool and use an angular dimension, so this is 40 and then this is uh, 34.96, so definitely not what we want to have. So the reason why this happens is when you make a connection between this wall and this edge, it kind of shifts that edge a little bit for some reason. Uh, now, if you use a void, it's not going to do that. So here it looks perfectly fine. And here it looks all awful and crooked. So uh, if you want to avoid this issue, I suggest using that void. I think it uh, doesn't really create any problems, but it does solve this issue. So anyways, uh, now that I have explained that, so you don't gonna call me out on doing the, <laughs> the wrong approach. I'm just going to go here to reset profile. And also, if you have a recommendation why this uh, should be working or how to make it work properly, uh, please tell me in the comment section below. I am genuinely interested in, in, in finding out. Anyways, uh, let's go back to our west, no, south elevation. We can just get rid of this one. There we go. Okay, so here now we have to close it off on top. So for that, let's go to architecture. Let's go to roof. Uh, okay, not that. Uh, roof by extrusion, that's what they want. Uh, let's pick a plane and I'm just going to pick this wall here. There we go. Uh, for the level, you can set that at level two and then click OK again. Uh, now here you want to use an offset because this is 400 millimeters. So I'm just going to use pick lines and then 400 millimeters translated into meters is 0.4 and then you go just like this. Now, after you have done this, you want to go and turn this into wireframe. There we go. So we can see where the walls are because you want to extend this all the way to the outer wall edge. Same thing goes here. There we go. And now when I hit finish, this is what happens. Okay, so this is way too long. So here you want to bring it towards the inside a little bit uh, and here as well. And now to make everything be in its place. I suggest going here to the Modify tab, go to Align tool, select this face here, select this edge here. There we go. We can even lock that. Select this face and then this edge. We can lock that as well. And then finally, let's select this wall, hold the Control key, select these two as well. Attach top base, click here, and there we go looks perfectly good. Uh, you can just use join geometry if you want to join these together. Uh, it's just going to make it look a little bit nicer in the sections, but that's pretty much it. Okay, so once we have done that, uh, now you, you might find it annoying that you have these lines here at the edges. You can fix that by going to the line work tool and then changing this to invisible lines. I like to do that because it does look awful without that. See how nice it looks right now. And finally this one. And do we have something on the inside? Oh, that's ugly. So here and he oops, not there. Let's go back. So here. There we go. So now this looks a lot nicer. Uh, finally, we can place a door there. So I can just go here to the architecture tab, uh, go to the door tool. I can use perhaps the 
the largest one that I have here, place it like that, kind of even it out in the center. And now to make it even nicer, uh, what I suggest you do is uh, go here to the, I think it's on the modify tab. Yeah, we have the paint tool. So uh, the paint tool should be here. There we go, paint. So it's just going to start off your material browser. And then here you can search for the materials. So I, I can search for something like wood. And then let's say I want to use birch and then I can just apply that wood to any of these faces like that, see? Doesn't that look nicer? And then finally here as well. There we go, so that's what that would look like. So you can have perhaps a different color or something like that, but I think this looks really, really cool. It's a uh, uh, it's quite common these days. I think it's uh, these uh, gable roofs are kind of the new trend and the kind of the inverted uh, version or the kind of the void version is the kind of the new <laughs> new cool way to create your entrances or any effects on the facade. So this is how you can do that in Revit. So I hope this was interesting. Uh, I hope you learned something new. But tell me about that issue if you know the solution to that. And also, if you're interested in any of my courses, check out my website, balkanarctic.com. Uh, and that's going to be the first link in the description. And if you want access to all of my project files, like this file that I have here, as well as any of my other project files, I've got over 400 files uh, on my website at the, or on my Patreon page at the moment. That's the second link in the description. So make sure to check it out. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video, comment. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I'll see you with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. Have a nice day.